All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Union West Downtown Housing Experience Q&A. We are so excited to have you here and to be having a Union West live stream. Uh, my name is Jenna Saxton, and I am the Marketing Coordinator for Union West Housing and Residence Life. Um, and I'm really excited to have two of our campus partners here. Um, so I will go ahead and let them introduce themselves to you. Hi everyone, my name is Mari Milenkovic and I am the Assistant Director of the Rec and Wellness Center at Downtown. And hello, my name is Tim Donovan and I am the Associate Director for Conduct and Care Services Downtown. Awesome. So today we will be focusing on what it will be like to live on campus at Union West for the fall 2020 semester and the resources that will be available to all of our residents. We know that everyone is really excited for move in, which is just a few weeks away. So we will do a deep dive into that topic next week. Um, and hopefully you can join us for that live stream. Uh, but for today, we will focus on what resources you will have at your fingertips. If you have not submitted your application to live at Union West for fall 2020, you are not too late. There is still time to apply. So you can always go ahead and visit our website at unionwest.ucf.edu backslash apply to learn more and reserve your spot. Um, so hopefully, if you haven't already applied, this will this will inspire you to uh, apply today. Um, so I'm going to let our partners uh, introduce and give you some updates on uh, what the downtown student experience will look like. Um, so I will pull up this presentation for you and Tim will kick us off. All right. Um, well, thank you for that introduction, Jenna. Um, yes, uh, I think the first question that everybody wants to know is where am I going to be able to eat um, if I'm downtown? And so uh, the first question, uh, so we have a, four options that will be available come this fall. Um, Duncan, uh, Duncan and Subway are currently open. Cordoba and Vera Asian are on their way, going to be here soon. So very exciting stuff. Those are what are located physically on campus. Um, it is my understanding that we'll still have the food trucks available as well, um, which those are on a rotating basis. And you can always check out the UCF mobile app to find out what's there um, at any given time. They're not back yet, but they will be. Um, uh, so just, just keep that in mind. Um, but we also have things near campus as well. Uh, most notably, there is a brand new Starbucks in the bottom of the Marriott, which is right next to campus, literally next to the uh, communication and media building. Um, so that's very exciting for those people who uh, need their Starbucks fix. Um, they're not paying me to say that. I'm just just letting you know. Um, as well as um, right, you know, a short walk as you get right under I-4, um, there's Ace Cafe, and then it opens up into what is downtown. And there's a ton of uh, options within walking distance right there. And of course, you can use all of the delivery services. Um, they, they come right here to Union West as well. Um, and they deliver from a ton of places. So the options are endless. If you want to walk, if you want to pay for delivery, um, as well as we have the the uh, the lime uh, the lime loops of the bus, which are free for our students. All you gotta do is show your ID, and you can hop right on, um, and you can get to any one of those number of places as well. So we always want to make sure that uh, that you know you're well fed. Everybody wants to know what the food's like. Um, so that's that's a little preview there. Um, and then we're gonna transition a little bit. What services and, and resources are available to you as, as a student? Um, and so. The first thing you, we want to note is first stop, right? So um, as you're coming in and you're checking in to, to move into Union West, you'll notice to the left while you're standing in line is this place called First Stop. And um, like it suggests, it's the first place you want to go to make sure that you have everything squared away to be a student here. Um, and so whether you're a UCF or a Valencia student, you can utilize this service. Um, and really what their goal is, is if you have questions about things like financial aid, admissions, um, registration, uh, some some advising for Valencia uh, uh, majors and things like that. You go there and they're going to get you the answer. So we, if you go to the next slide for me, um, you'll meet with one of our uh, our coaches, our success uh, uh, success coaches. Um, and what they'll do is they'll take your information down. They'll um, you'll you'll check in. You'll say what you're there for. They'll they'll meet with you. They'll try to answer as many questions as as you uh, as they can. And if for some reason they can't answer it because it's super specific, maybe like that super specific financial aid question. We have a financial aid specialist on site who's going to, they're going to refer you to and get you in with so you can get those questions answered. Um, it, it, you know, a lot of times if you're at another campus, sometimes those things take a little bit longer to get in contact with those services. And that's one of the beautiful things is because we are a full service campus. 
those things are available here and usually our wait times are a bit shorter. Um, you also may be wondering, well, are they gonna be open in the fall? I, it looks like we're gonna be doing a mixed modes approach, but we definitely can serve you virtually both now and then. Okay, so if you're if you're looking for information about that, you can always go to our website, um, dtc.ses.ucf.edu, and then you click on the first stop tab there, um, and it'll have their virtual uh, their virtual check in form, so you, or virtual intake form. I'm sorry, so you can just click on that, and they'll they'll uh, they'll they'll contact you with the way you want to be contacted, and they'll set up that virtual appointment. So know that you can access them now. You'll be able to access them uh, once you get here as well. So. Definitely uh, an exciting resource. It's, it's one of a kind, and, and that, that is for both UCF and Valencia students. doesn't matter. We're going to get you the answer that, that you need. So um, definitely wanted to throw that out there. And then we're going to, after you do first stop, then you can head on upstairs, which is what we're going to talk to you about here then. So as you come up either the elevator or the stairs, um, if you bear to the right, uh, you will enter what we call our student success uh, and engagement wing, um, which you can see right here. Uh, you'll be greeted by somebody at the front desk. Um, and they'll find out, well, what are you here for? And so we're going to talk a little bit about what, what's available. Um, so there's the student success options, and then there's also student engagement, which we'll talk about first, which are some things that you can do while you're here. So if you want to go ahead and go to the next slide, we have student engagement. Um, student engagement is, a, a, is, again, for both UCF and Valencia students. It's run by, by both institutions. We jointly work together in, in this realm. And we create programming. So we have the downtown, uh, we have the downtown campus life board. Um, which is made up of UCF and Valencia students who design what what the student experience is going to be like here. So what's offered, they're a programming board essentially. So they'll offer things from uh, volunteer opportunities to social events to, uh, you know, uh, things you can do around Orlando. Um, so if you want to kind of start to cycle through some of those pictures a bit, um, this was from the Love Yourself event, which was a Valentine's Day event that they had. Um, where you could do things like design your own cookies as well as some other things like that. So it was a great event just to hang out. Um, they also had some great food at that event. Um, they almost always have food at their events. So again, food is a theme here. Um, you, you get the good food at the events, um, right? So come on by. Um, they also had their their glow event, um, which you can see pictures of that here um, and the next one as well. Um, so those are some opportunities. So just some things to do to hang out. Um, but they do some other really cool stuff as well. Um, they, they set up volunteer uh, opportunities throughout downtown Orlando, um, as well as they do the things that you can do in Orlando. So last year they went to an Orlando City soccer game. They went to Orlando Magic game. Um, they've done some of the local theaters and comedy clubs. Um, this is a picture of the programming board. So they have their own space where they you know, will, will meet and determine what are the great things that they want to do and what, what you as a student can do. And so the opportunities are endless. They're growing. Um, you might even be like, well, what are they doing virtually? They're still doing stuff virtually. Um, so you'll definitely want to check out their social media, which we'll share um, for you as well. Um, so you can follow them. They're at, uh, at Downtown Student Life, um, but the no O's in downtown. Um, then um, we'll go back into student success, right? And so we have our testing and accessibility services is a service available to students. So if you are looking, we have a state-of-the-art testing center. Um, so if you need to, to take a test for a class or something like that, you can go there and sign up for your class uh, to take your test there, as well as they have um, accessibility service specialists as well, both for UCF and Valencia. So if you're in need of, of some accommodations, go talk to them. They'll see what they can do for you and get you set up. Um, additionally, uh, we have another about 14 or so services available in the student success and engagement wing. So if you're looking for things like career services, if you're looking for um, international student services, things like that, um, there it's available. We have a couple full-time units, um, like career services that are here all the time, but we also have what we call our hoteling units or our rotating units. Um, and so those are those are those things like our international student services, um, things for to find internship opportunities, things of that nature. Um, we have all of those as well as our advising for uh, Nicholson School of Communication and Media and the College of Community Innovation and Education. So if you're looking to find out what classes do I need to take, um, you know, what do I need to do in terms of, you know, when do I need to get that internship, things like that, that's that's where you're gonna go. So you go to the front desk, tell them you need an appointment, they'll get you set up, or you can schedule um, through through their main campus uh, partners as well. And so um, we definitely encourage you to, to come meet with your advisor so that you know that you're on track, you're not missing those classes, um, et cetera. So, Really, our goal um, in the first and second floor is that we're a one-stop shop. So you can come here, get everything done that you need to. And then once you're done getting those things, you can go see Mari, 
and uh, and she can she can give you some other awesome things to do, like access to gyms and stuff like that. But I'm gonna let her talk about that because really, like, she's better at it than I am anyway. So I'm gonna hand that over to her, and she can tell you about the amazing things that well being has to offer. Thanks, Tim. So yes, uh, on the same floor, so we're still looking at the second floor of Union West, we have a whole section for well-being. And within this area, we have four different departments that work together to provide well-being services. And one of them is the Recreation and Wellness Center. So this is a fitness center on campus. Yes, you do have access to it as a Union West resident or a UCF student or a Valencia downtown student. You have access to our facility at no extra charge. So you can utilize this um, at any time that we are open. So go ahead and let's click on the next one. I just wanna give you a little tour of the space so that you know what to expect. So we have a state-of-the-art facility with brand new equipment. All of our cardio equipment is connected to uh, the Wi-Fi so you can access Netflix, you can access YouTube, so you can really uh, have some fun while you're getting your cardio in. Our machine weights or our selectorized equipment provide a full circuit workout, so you can do that as well. And they have rep counters and um, set counters as well, so you can uh, you don't have to think about while you're while you're doing it. Then in the back area, we also have a free weight. Um, section as well as a functional space where you can do your squats, your benches, your deadlifting, but then also really get creative with your workouts uh, within our rig in the middle there where you see all that different equipment so you can get more creative with your uh, workouts and uh, try different things. So we always have staff available that can help you with that as well. And then we also have a group exercise studio where we host uh, group exercise classes. Now for the fall, we're looking at outdoor classes. Uh, however, this space will be available for stretching or body weight exercises, as well as a little bit of cardio. But this is here and we have things like yoga, boot camp, meditation, bar, Zumba. So a little bit of everything and for all the different uh, things that you may be looking for. Additionally, the Rec and Wellness Center also offers outdoor adventure trips, which you can get to learn a little bit more about all the services or not services, but really get to know your downtown community. So it's, it's really fun uh, opportunity and also another way to um, meet new people. And uh, we have intramural sports like esports. So we have esport tournaments where you can uh, compete with others and get a chance to win some cool prizes. So that's really neat. And then if we go to the next slide, I also want to tell you about all the other great departments that are within the well being area of Union West. And these departments include student health services, counseling psychological services, and wellness and health promotion services. So these departments open primary health care or offer primary health care. They have free confidential, confidential mental health counseling, crisis intervention and management. We have free HIV testing and counseling where you can get your results in 15 minutes. We have biofeedback counseling where you can learn what are some tips that you can utilize to reduce your stress and anxiety based on how your body's reacting to set tips. We also have wellness coaching where you can meet with a certified wellness coach and work one on one on your goals, whether it be time management or um, nutrition coach or nutrition goals. And then we have nutrition education as a component of that as well, where we do cooking classes and we've had some really great uh, ones with Union West. So that's definitely something you can look forward to. We also offer couponing and SNAP, so different ways that you can learn to save some money. It's a really cool opportunity there and personal training where you can meet with a certified personal trainer at a discounted rate um, to work on your fitness goals. So that's kind of like a summary of all of the services that we offer downtown in Union West. So keep in mind that um, we also have programs and events and we partner with all of the wonderful departments that Tim mentioned too. So this is just a really quick snapshot of a much greater variety. Awesome. Thank you so much to both of you for that. That was such great information um, and directly leads us into our Q&A portion. Um, so we had a lot of really great pre-submitted questions. So we are going to go ahead and uh, get to those first. And then as we go through, um, if you have questions, be sure to put them in the comments and we will get to those live uh, as we get towards the end of these questions. All right, um, so first question that we have uh, is for you, Mari. 
Will the gym be open for the fall? Yes, and if that is so, a great question. When? So we are currently working on a fall plan, which does include the gym being open at some extent to some capacity. So there are different measures that we're putting in place to increase safety, uh, decrease risk. Uh, but there's, you know, um, a lot of things that come into play and in our, our biggest priorities is student safety. So we have been moving equipment around with increasing our cleaning and sanitation, uh, really determining what capacity would look like so that you can physical distance within our space. So the answer is yes, we will be open at some capacity and we will be announcing that on our Instagram um, channel as soon as we have the, the for sure details, but also our website is a, a great resource for that as well, where you will have the most up-to-date information. Awesome, thank you very much for that. Um, next question that we have is for Tim. Um, you already touched on it pretty much at the beginning of your presentation, but just to reiterate, uh, what restaurants and food op food options will be open in the fall? Yeah. Um, so again, um, currently we have uh, the physical spaces are done um, for both Duncan and Subway, which were open last year. Um, and then uh, the plan that I've heard is the Vera Asian and um, Cordoba will also be open um, for the fall semester. Um, I'm not sure exactly on the date. I haven't heard that finalized yet, but I have heard that the plan is for them to be open, which is very exciting. And then of course, um, all the other stuff that's around campus um, like Starbucks and then the ones that are a little bit further, but those aren't exactly on campus. Um, if I don't know if there's any other restaurants that you definitely want to highlight, but Mari could probably highlight some because she's in the area a lot. So I'm not sure if there's any other restaurants that she want to highlight that are around campus, but those are the main ones. Yeah, there is a diff lot of different opportunities. Like uh, Tim said, if you just walk a little bit past the link station, even that's right across from um, Ace Cafe. But the, uh, my favorite uh, is Black Rooster Taco. So I love Black Rooster Taco. It's a, it's, it's, Technically, um, I would say probably a five minute drive, but there's so many possibilities. I mean, you can always grab one of the hopper bikes, you can grab one of the um, scooters and, and get, there's so many places that you can get around town with those options as well, or the limo bus, which is free. Awesome, thank you. There are definitely a lot of food options and even the staff members get excited about them as they open. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, Tim, this one is probably for you again. Um, will any fall events be offered in person? Um, the plan that I've heard is yes. Um, I think just like I think Mari maybe just put a little disclaimer in front of hers is that all plans are, you know, obviously subject to change, but it is our goal um, to, to offer some in-person events. I'm not sure what those are at this time yet. Um, but definitely want to follow those things that I saw got posted in the comments. We definitely want to follow downtown student life um, where they're going to post those as they're made available. Um, of course, depending on the current state of, of the world, right? Things are always a little bit subject to change. Um, but we, I, the plan is that we're going to be offering some. So be on the lookout for those. Yeah, we actually have been working on a list of fall events, which is, is pretty pretty comprehensive. So we're pretty excited about that. And when it comes to well-being, uh, we will be looking at outdoor events, definitely limiting the amount of people that can participate and taking a measure or taking into consideration physical distancing measures and different um, ways to make sure that we're reducing risk. Absolutely. Awesome. So in both of your areas, some events uh, in person, hopefully. Um, and then next question, um, Tim, you can probably uh, take this one and Mari add on what uh, you have. What student services will be open? You kind of already detailed a little bit of that, but maybe a deeper dive in there. Yeah. Um, so the plan of what student services will be open, um, we're all going to be open just to virtually. So let's just start there. Every service will be available virtually um, and are currently. So let's just kind of say that first. That said, it is our hope that the front desks, uh, at least what I've heard, and these plans are not finalized, so I'm, I'm a little hesitant to, to say definitively, but um, it sounds like the student success and engagement front desk should be open. Um, I, it sounds like the first stop desk should be open. Again, these plans are all subject to change. So again, I don't want to, and uh, I don't want to say yes, and then you get here and they're not. Um, what we will encourage you to do is certainly check 
our website. So one of the things that each, each area says what they're operating currently under each page, we're going to be adding an additional page, which is just a, a list of how the services are available at each time. And so um, we always encourage you to check that out first before you come with the expectation that they're open and then find out they're not. So we don't want you to, you know, uh, you know, come on over and, um, you know, especially if you're upstairs and come all the way down to find out, oh man, I could have just found that out online. We, you know, that's why we, our goal is to keep it as updated as possible. But, um, you know, we hope that we'll be available uh, in person for as, as, much as, as much as we can. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would say definitely that like we want to be there. We want to um, provide these services to you in person. So we are doing all that we can in the in the moment. And um, and like Tim said, we will be our services will be available in one way or another, whether it's in person or virtual or a mix of both. So we're also looking at a mixed mode type approach. For example, when it comes to our group exercise classes, we will continue to offer them online daily. Um, but then we're also looking at the option of doing some outdoor classes to supplement that and, and provide that in person uh, service as well. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and we'll jump into the comments just a little bit. Um, so there was a question from Chelsea. Is there a Stairmaster in the gym, Mari? We actually have two. Um, so definitely something you look, you can look forward to using when you, when you get there. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> um, and then the next question, actually, we also um, have it from Kathy in the chat. Um, so is the shuttle going to run in the fall uh, to main campus, UCF's main campus? So between the two. Yeah. So go ahead. No, I was just going to say that it's my understanding that it, that it will run. We don't have a schedule set for that yet for the fall. Um, but up until this point, what we've we've heard so far is that we want to keep that transportation going. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, next question we have, Mari, will Yoga Under the Stars come back? One of the events that we held for our residents last semester. <laughs> Yeah, that was super fun. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, we had yoga under the stars in the um, sixth floor, what you call it, balcony. Is that right? The sixth floor patio. Um, so that was really cool. It's a great view of downtown. Um, so that was a really great experience. It would definitely provide us an opportunity to be outdoors and potentially socially distanced. So it would be an event that is um, definitely geared towards uh, Union West residents only. So that's something that we will work with housing to determine if it's something that we can offer, but I'd totally be open to it. Awesome. All right. And then we had a question about food trucks, which Tim, you did touch on. Will they be back in the fall? Last I heard, yes. Um, I'm hoping that that is uh, that that's going to be the case. I, I have not heard with 100 percent definitively, but I, I believe the end, the plan is yes. Let's hope so. They have some good ones. So. Oh. Such great food. Such great yes, food. definitely. All right. Um, the next question we had um, was about mask distribution, which is a really great question. Um, so it was asked, where will our masks be distributed? Um, the lucky thing for all of our Union West residents, when you move in, you will get a welcome bag with goodies from all of our student services, as well as uh, some things from us. So a mask will be included in that. So you won't need to worry about going and picking up your mask at the downtown uh, campus. You will have them given to you. So super convenient for those who live with us. All right, next question, Mari, we're going to go to you. What rec and wellness services will be available? Yes. So we've touched about on this a little bit, but um, I want to make sure that I point out that personal training will be available to some extent too. We'll be most likely uh, looking at a way that we can utilize a facility outside business hours to reduce uh, you know, crowds or, or multiple people using the space, but we will have that um, available to some extent. Group exercise classes will continue to be uh, offered virtually, but then also we're looking at outdoor um, opportunities as well, where you can be, you know, enjoying the fresh air and also physically distanced. Uh, we will, uh, the fitness center to some extent, that's what we're, we're looking at as well. 
with those extended measures. And then we will continue to offer uh, services through RWC Plus. So really keeping uh, a look in our social media pages, our website. So we will continue to have esports tournaments. If we can't have them in person, they will continue to be virtual. So I know I believe that's a question that will be uh, asked soon uh, about esports. So yes, we will continue to have esports. It just may not be an in-person event, but you can do that at the comfort of your own home. We also have other virtual type competitions that intramural sports is, is hosting that will be available. And then when it looks uh, comes to outdoor adventure, we're really looking at some options for day trips where um, you can meet us at the space where that we'll be featuring or that we would be exploring and um, really uh, get to know a little bit more of the downtown community and, and the green spaces that we have around campus. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, and then Tim says he has a mask that we will be distributing um, on him. So you get a preview here, seen it first on the Union West Facebook page. Uh, nice little face mask. So that will uh, be given to you in your welcome bag. Uh, so something to look forward to. Um, and then actually, I Tim. I say they're very comfortable too. They are very comfortable. They're very comfortable. It's become one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. I use it all the time. So. <laughs> Yes, and you get compliments too. <laughs> awesome. All right, Tim, this one's for you again. Um, so how will students be able to utilize First Stop? I know in the photos we kind of saw some barriers. Um, what would it look like to use that resource? Yeah, um, again, uh, supposing that we will be able to, to maintain in-person services, uh, you'll come up. You, They will do a, uh, a check-in process. Um, so they might ask you a couple questions. Um, that you'll answer and then they will uh, kind of get you into a, in, into a holding area and then we'll get you in front of a success coach to get those questions answered for you, um, you know, and, and get all your stuff taken care of. So supposing we're able to be in person, that's going to be the plan is we'll get you, we'll get you in. There'll be a, a small waiting area until they can get you in, then we'll, you'll get a chance to do it. Um, likely be plexiglass shields um, between you and the person you're meeting with um, for, for everyone's protection. But the, the plan is that that's, that's how we'll operate. And you'll notice that there's plexiglass shields um, all over all the front desks um, that we have around uh, around the different areas. So student success and engagement already has theirs up. Uh, well-being has theirs up. Um, I've seen, I, I know Union West has yours up as well and, and first stops are there as well. So, you know, everybody, is, 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 we're trying to make sure that we create the safest environment that we possibly, we possibly can. Absolutely, thank you uh, Def, for giving us a little peek into what it could look like. Um, and then Mari, question for you. Um, will the virtual rec and wellness classes uh, run through the fall? Yes, we will continue to run um, the RWC Plus and the virtual fitness classes, definitely. What's great about those two is that they're all on our Instagram um, account, so you can always go back and look at them. We also have a bunch on our YouTube page, so definitely something that's available to you. But we'll continue to run some via Zoom and via Instagram Live, and then continue to post just different activities and, and tips that you can do on your own. So if you don't feel comfortable coming to our facility yet, no big deal. We got you covered on that end as well. Awesome, tons of way to exercise for sure, which is exciting. Um, all right, next question. Um, Tim and Mari, I think both of you can kind of um, take this one. How is the downtown campus planning to engage with students? Uh, yeah, so um, we will be providing um, Certainly, like I said, we've already established that all of our services will be open, but we'll also be providing programming virtually, um, if not able to provide in person. So if we can provide some in-person opportunities, we certainly want to do that. Um, but we will also be providing some virtual opportunities as well. And so trying to get creative with events and doing things. I know that student engagement over the summer has done um, some virtual, I think they call Zoom tunes, uh, which is like where they can do uh, caricature artists or, or something like, is that correct? Mari, I think you would probably even maybe know a little bit more about that. Uh, but they did like the caricature artists, um, you know, where you could on through Instagram. And so you would like, they would like, you know, send them a picture and they would do it for you or, or something of that nature, um, as well as they're looking at all kinds of other virtual opportunities. Um, these are, don't quote me on that, but I've, I've heard that um, some ideas kicked around is like doing a virtual painting event where the 
the the paint supplies would be provided to you and then they would do have somebody facilitated over like a zoom or something like that where they would be actually be doing the drawing of the the painting and so you get to do it alongside them as if you were doing a paint night but you're doing it socially distanced and so we're trying to create some cool and different opportunities to, to get you all engaged and do things that are a little different or outside the box but that we can create these you know opportunities to be engaged with each other and and maybe it's creating discussion opportunities or you know providing educational programming and things like that from other services and so maybe it's career services doing some of their their um kind of like resume 101 workshops that would typically be done in person but moving those to virtual and so our goal is to try and get as many of those things that we would typically offer in some kind of adapted form um, to be virtual when we can't offer them in person and so we encourage you to be you know checking out checking your email and stuff like that it's really going to be important but also checking the the ucf calendar and i and i know that that may feel like oh well what if i'm a valencia student all of our downtown programming we got on the ucf calendar that integrates with the ucf mobile app and so i guess this is my chance to kind of pitch that as a as a piece but we encourage everybody to download the ucf mobile app and you can select the downtown experience and it populates all this information that we've talked about today so you can find out information about our services. You can find out the shuttle schedule. You can find out what events are going on, both virtually and in person. You can do, you know, get the latest updates about campus operations. Is there something that's changed, something that's switched? It's your place to do that. And so again, it, it, I encourage every student that's a downtown student to do this, select that downtown experience so you can find out what the most up-to-date information is and not miss out on these opportunities. Because we recognize that if, you know, you're not taking classes on campus this fall, you may not see those posters you usually see with, oh, this is the event that's coming up. So, you know, it's gonna take a little bit more, I think, on 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 our students to wanna go out and look for the information, but our goal is to provide it and have it available to you so that, that you all miss out on those important experiences and those important opportunities that you would typically have in a quote unquote normal semester. And, and we, we know that, that, so I just wanna definitely encourage that as a resource um, to do that as well. And Mari, please jump in. Yeah, I just wanted to add to specifically look into the week of welcome events. So the first week of classes, we're going to have so many events There will all be on the calendar of events. So you can look into that. There will be some virtual, some in person. Um, so definitely lots to take advantage of. And so, you know, keep, we know that this is an exciting time and we want to celebrate it with you. So that's why that week is, is going to be packed full of events. So definitely take a peek at the calendar for that for that specific time as well. And I will add too, on the housing front, we uh, continue to have events planned, even if they're virtual. Um, we are known for giving our residents food um, and that will continue just in boxed form. Um, so there are definitely um, still many, many ways uh, that we will be entertaining and filling the bellies of our residents who live on campus with us. Um, so the next question that we have, um, will the library be open on campus? Mari, do you remember? I, Jason talked about it, but I'm not sure I remember. Do you remember? <laughs> so I believe the answer is uh, that you will be able to meet with the uh, librarian if you need to. Like, you can still have those appointments. Um, but if there is a book that you're looking for, then there will be a way that you can um, order it or ask for it or, or some somehow that it will get to you. But I don't, and I'm not 100% sure, but I believe the physical space will not be open. Perfect. So still some way to at least get your books um, in a safe way. Awesome. Um, okay, the next question that I have um, is, will study spaces be open? Um, maybe kind of just a general, where can students study if you're living on campus? Um, what will they have access to? I'm not sure I've heard the plan fully on that. Um, I know that currently the student success and engagement front at front area has been socially distanced so the tables have been moved apart so that they are socially distanced so that is one area that i know will for sure be open um, for students to study um so i just want to throw that throw that out there that that's one area i have not heard about the areas in dpac or in cmb that are areas that are first that typically are for study my hunch is that they would be open but i i don't I'm not sure for sure. And I, and if anybody else knows a little bit more, feel free to jump in. 
think it's good that um, to point out that there are so many open areas in on campus that you can really take advantage of that um, you just have to make sure you're being physically distanced and you know you're following the policies and regulations but there's a lot of open areas where where you you're able that you're able to enjoy and, and really study so. and the nice thing too is that union west residents have access to floor six through 15 which other uh, people at the downtown campus don't so um, there are definitely a lot of study spaces there um, there will be reduced capacity in those places but there will still be um, places that you can find uh, a place to sit down that's different than your room and get a change of scenery. Um, all right, we're gonna jump into the live comments again before we get back to the pre-submitted ones. Um, so a question from Joanna, Will Wellbeing Services, do you need insurance to use these? Okay, that's a great question. So um, downtown, since we are, uh, we serve UCF students and Valencia students, it's a, it's a little bit different. So my suggestion would be to go to the Student Health Services website and really get all the information that you need through there. Just depending on which campus uh, you're attending, there will be a little bit different. Uh, however, I know that if you're a registered UCF student who's paying the health fee, you wouldn't need insurance in order to get primary health, but you would need insurance uh, for copay purposes if it's more, um, specialized care okay uh, and that's just for student health services so this is your nurse practitioner that we have on campus uh, when it comes to hiv testing biofeedback wellness coaching nutrition education um, the the fitness facility all of those services are uh, just free for you to use um, as a student of either ucf or valencia downtown yeah, and, and to add on a little bit more about as well as uh, for CAPS or Counseling and Psychological Services, um, that is available. Um, so it's a little different depending on what type of student you are, but it is available for both students. So um, there are no, no, no fees associated with UCF students. Um, again, the same would also be true with Valencia students, but you go through BayCare. Um, and so um, BayCare is, is, a, is a service for all Valencia students that if they're in need of mental health, um, mental health services, they reach out to BayCare and then you can request if you're a downtown student to be assigned our CAPS counselors down here. So you can then get assigned your counselor here and you can get your sessions provided through here versus a, another local provider. Um, and so the answer is you can do both, um, but it's just, it's a little bit different depending on which student you are, how you go about accessing them. Awesome, thank you. We are lucky to have both of you in your wealth of knowledge. Um, okay, next we have a question um, for Tim and probably Mari too. Um, UCF downtown, Valencia College downtown is still a new campus. Um, so is there anything that our residents who lived with us before or maybe new residents um, could anticipate that would be new and something that they had not seen open before they came to camp, before when they were on campus uh, last semester? Yeah, um, so first and foremost, you'll notice that there is a new fountain in front of uh, DPAC or uh, Dr. Phillips academic commons, uh, but we call it DPAC. Um, and so, um, that, that is now finished. Uh, it's a nice little feature. It, it adds a nice little ambiance to the sound out there. Um, and so I, I enjoy walking by it and hearing that sound. Um, I'm not sure there's a lot else open. You'll notice that, that, uh, some of the, the sidewalks that maybe were not previously connecting different areas are now finalized. Um, but the major change you're going to notice is, um, there used to be that parking lot that was across from DPAC, kind of in that area between DPAC and Union West. They, they sit like an L and it's that area in between. Um, the parking lot has been closed, which was closed at the end of last year. So you might have known that. But behind that is now all currently under construction because they are beginning the park that is going to be available, uh, the city park, which is super exciting. We are very excited for that. We still don't really have a solid timeline. We're, we're hoping by the end of Next, by next summer, I believe, Mari, is that what you heard for the for the park? I think next summer is the goal. Yeah, last I heard uh, from the city, they were going to be breaking ground in October. Okay. So that's when the official uh, start would be for the park. And then uh, we would be looking at a, uh, so like about a year, I believe, of, of construction. I don't know, anything else you, to add that's, that you know is gonna be different about campus, Mari? 
No, I mean, I can say that we've been, um, before the, the everything happened, we were looking at uh, new offerings for our group exercise classes. So definitely keep an eye out for that to see if it's something that we will eventually be able to um, introduce once uh, restrictions are a little bit uh, lifted. And uh, But I don't have anything uh, concrete to announce at the time, other than the all the virtual offerings that we've had, not necessarily physically on campus, but still available to you. Yes, lots of new virtual uh, options that we've pivoted to include. So some of them might be even more fun than before. <laughs> um, okay, so Mari, this is a question for you. Um, it, you kind of touched on esports a little bit, um, and it was just: Will intramural esports be occurring in the fall? Um, and what kind? What would that look like? Yes, we will definitely be uh, working on on offering those. Right now, we actually already have some on the calendar for the fall, definitely starting with a virtual approach. Um, I know that, oh, we didn't talk about the game room. That's a new something that will be happening, um, which esports made me think of it. So eventually it's something that we would like to uh, be able to do the, the tournaments themselves, be able to do in person again. So we'll, we'll work towards that and see what we're able to provide at that point. Uh, but yes, definitely virtual and definitely look at the week of welcome and, and the weeks after because we traditionally have uh, different games that you can participate on. So it's not just one or once a month. It's just it's constant. Awesome. Lots of lots of really fun virtual ways to still get involved. I know that that is uh, one that students really, really enjoy. Um, okay, and then um, Tim and Mari, maybe you both can um, take this. Will any clubs be meeting in the fall? I'm not sure. Um, would encourage you to check out um, their respective club pages. Um, so if uh, I'm, I'm not sure we share those already in the comments about them, uh, uh, but if you go to the engagement page on our website, um, you can see a list of all our current clubs. I would encourage you to check out their their pages. They're all linked there um, to find out more about joining them, figure out what they're doing, as well as I know a lot of clubs and organizations also have like Instagram accounts and things like that that you can follow to find out when they're doing. I know some clubs have been doing virtual stuff, virtual hangouts, stuff like that over the summer. Um, so definitely, you know, check them out online. I know Instagram is kind of the big one that a lot of clubs tend to tend to do. So if there's a club you're interested in, um, check it out. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, if you're a UCF student, I know you can also get in involved with clubs on main campus, um, as well as I'm not sure exactly how the Valencia piece works. If you can join uh, clubs that they have on other campuses or not, I'm not sure. Um, but I know they have a few that are, are downtown specific, um, but the, the, hopefully that can answer some questions there. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, so hopefully you're taking away that there will still be a lot to do on the downtown campus in the fall. Um, it will not be a ghost town anymore, which we are really excited to be bringing our students back. Um, so that is all the questions that, that I have that were pre-submitted. Um, I will leave a little bit of extra time if there are any um, other questions in the comments that I missed. Um, Let's see, it looks like there is one, um, and Mari, you can uh, maybe answer this a little bit um, or share some of the plans or ideas. Um, how will the gym access be set up now with COVID-19 issues? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so we are working on a content le contactless entry. So the least amount of touch points that we can have, the better. So we will have a barcode access that you can um, access through our, our UCF RWC app. So you can do that um, at any point. You can fill out the waiver, get your barcode, be ready to go. Uh, we have also been uh, moving around the equipment to make sure they're between six to 10 feet apart. And if we cannot do that due to our space restrictions, then we are uh, restricting access to some of the equipment in order to facilitate this as well. We're also really looking at the contact or the material of the equipment that we have and making sure that any porous material um, is not available available at the times and making sure that we are sanitizing constantly. Uh, we have added new measures of cleaning and sanitation. We um, have added contest, contactless uh, use in our bathroom. So think of like the paper towels and, and so on. So 
definitely lots of, we'll be doing lots of cleaning throughout the day, lots of cleaning after and um, working on, on contactless ways to serve you. Awesome, thank you very much. Lots of good information. All right, it's looking like, looking like we got through all of the questions that we had that were um, submitted to us. Um, so that is probably going to wrap us up. Um, and Mari, Tim, if you had any parting words, pieces of advice for our incoming residents, um, I will let you share. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd like to add that i um, definitely super excited for you to join Union West. It's very cool that you have all these services in where you live. So you just have to go downstairs and you have access to all these different um, amazing services. So please take advantage of them. Come see us. If you're looking for on-campus employment, uh, the Rec and Wellness Center does hire both UCF and Valencia students. So um, you can find that on our website under employment and there is a link for an application for the downtown campus so please fill that out we will be hiring uh, in the beginning of august so it's really soon um, you can look forward to hearing from us and i just hope that you take advantage of all these services and i hope to meet you all uh soon hopefully uh yeah and and definitely everything mari said 100 percent on all of that stuff um and really the thing that if i could tell you anything is you know if you have a question about anything that can help you be successful or you're like, I don't know the answer, ask. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask questions of us. It's okay to ask questions of the other services we've talked about. It's okay to ask questions of your professors, right? Uh, so many people are like, oh, I can't ask the question because they're gonna think I'm you know, not prepared to be in this class or, or prepared to be a student. No, that's why we're here. That's the whole point. So many students struggle in in you know college and university system because they're just afraid to ask the question. And if they just asked the question and got the answer, they'd be much better off for it. And so don't be afraid to do that. Um, you know we're here to help. That's what we get paid for. It's our job. It's what we, we it's what we choose to do. It's why we're here. It, right is to make sure that you're successful as a student um, and make sure that all your needs are are met to the best of our ability. So please come come find us ask us the questions, you know, and if we don't know, we'll, we'll get you the person who does, right? We may not have every answer, but we know somebody who does have the answer. Um, and so we will, we will do our best to get you connected. Um, we always try and say, we, we have this like coordinated care network down here, right? So that if I don't know the answer, I'm going to get you the person who does because we're a smaller campus. So we have, we know everybody, right? Um, if there's a question about the RWC, I don't have to call the RWC mainline to, and figure out who the person is that deals with that. I call Mari, right? Um, and so, you know, same thing with if there's an advising question, I don't, I'm not going to know the answer to your advising question, but I, I know that Didi or Sierra or Tawana or whoever, you know, I know these people, I'm going to get you to them and so that they can answer those questions for you. And so really that's our goal is just to make sure that you know that we have everything you need down here. Um, our, our, you know, kind of our marketing campaign, it happens downtown. It all happens downtown, right? That's the point is that we offer everything here. So that's the beautiful thing about electing to come to this campus versus go to some other campus is everything you have is needed right here. So, all right, I'm going to step off my soapbox here and, uh, you know, and, and, and hand it back over to Jenna. Awesome. Well, I couldn't think of a better way to wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much to you, Mari and Tim for joining us today. Um, thank you for all of you who viewed. Uh, hopefully we got to answer your questions. We will be back again next week on Monday to answer your move in questions because um, we are just as excited as excited about it as you are. Um, so follow us on Instagram. Uh, our Facebook page are already on it, YouTube. There's tons of ways to connect with us and stay updated on what is going on. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.